So this question is going to use aspects of a previous one that was completed and that was quite similar. So a forcing function f of t is equal to 10t is applied onto this cart and we need to solve for the new equation describing the displacement of the cart over time. So x is a function of time and we're given some conditions that need to be met and also the parameter values and these are unchanged from that previous question. So the first step here is going to be getting out our differential equation that needs solving and we get that from the free body diagram and summing the forces on it to be equal to mass times acceleration. So very similar to the previous um, question, we had a free body diagram there. We said we had a weight and a normal force acting on the cart. We also said that we were assuming the cart was going to move to the right, so that will be our mx double dash. And then what we have is an applied force, f of t, which is going to try and pull the cart uh, to the right. And as a result, we're going to have resisting forces through the spring and damper, which try to pull it back to where it was. And these are the same as before, cx dash and kx. So if we now apply our equation, so summing the forces in the x direction to be equal to the mass times acceleration in the x direction, um, all that's going to change is we've got this extra kind of force acting in our diagram. So it's f, all right. These are in the negative direction, so they're negative, so minus cx dash minus kx. And these are in the y, so they're not going to appear. And we know it's equal to the mass times acceleration, which is drawn in the positive x direction here. So it goes positive in the equation. So if we rearrange this equation, we can get it to look like this. Okay, and I can substitute in some values um, because we're given all of this um, information as well as the forcing function over time. So if we substitute in, we get this. So we need to try and solve this equation to get x um, on its own, x equals something in terms of t. And we can see that it is a second order equation um, because of the second derivative. And we can see that we have constant coefficients all on the left hand side. So the process to solve it is going to be um, this one here. Again, you can look at the recap video if you want some extra detail on this. Um, but the first step is to solve for the homogeneous solution. So what we can see here is that this time, compared to the last one, we don't have a homogeneous equation because the right hand side here is not equal to zero. So in order to find the homogeneous solution, all we do is set it equal to zero. So rewriting our equation, we get that the right hand side is equal to zero. And what we're going to find is that this equation we already solved in the previous video, okay, because we had a homogeneous system, we didn't have this f of t. So I've popped up here from the previous question, we can get that this is the solution, um, and go back and review that previous video if you want extra detail on that. So the solution to this is a homogeneous solution, so I'm going to write it out as xh this time. So it's going to be the c1 e to the negative t, um, cos of 1.414 t plus c2 e to the negative t sine 1.414 t. Alright, so that's the first part of the question done. So the next thing that we need to move on to is looking at the particular solution. And this was something we didn't do in the previous video really, because we already had the right hand side being equal to zero. But this time we can see that the right hand side is not equal to zero, it's equal to 10 t. So we are going to need to develop that particular solution. So jumping over to our steps here, we're going to assume a particular solution um, based on the guessing table. So this is um, the guessing table, and this is the right-hand side of our equation. So if we have a look here, we have something that looks like 10t. And if we look down the table, the closest we can kind of get to it is going to be this line here. So we can see if we have a constant plus some number times t, this is kind of what we have, then we can copy um, this out. So in our case, we don't need to have all these extra terms on the back end because we don't have a squared or a cubed or anything else. It can go up to as many um, terms as you need. So all we're going to have to take out is the first bit. So our left-hand side kind of looks like this, right? We don't have a constant, but we could. Our constant would be 0 plus a1t. So that means on the right-hand side, we're going to assume it to be the first bit here, so bo plus b1t. 
Okay, so this is the um, particular solution that we're going to draw out. So we know that now we've guessed our YP, we can substitute it into the left-hand side of our non-homogeneous uh, ODE and solve for the constants. So the constants we need are BO and B1. So let's go ahead and do that. So X of T, I'm sorry, X of P, we're assuming is this. And we're going to substitute it into our non-homogeneous one up here. So we need the first derivative and the second derivative to be able to do that. So taking a first derivative here, the constant is going to go to zero, and the derivative here would just be b1. And if we take a second derivative, all we've got is a constant, so its derivative is going to be zero. So let's substitute all of this information um, back up into this equation here. So we're going to get 2 times the second derivative, which is zero, plus 4 times the first derivative, which is b1, plus 6 times the um, normal equation. And all of this has to be equal to our right-hand side, the non-homogeneous bit. So we can simplify this down a little bit. 2 times 0 is going to go away. And we're left with 4b1. If I expand the brackets here, we've got 6bo plus 6b1t has to be equal to 10t. So what I should be able to do now is I know the number out the front of the t on the left-hand side has to equal the number out the front of the t on the right hand side. So I can say that 6b1 has to be equal to 10. And I'm going to have a second um, equation I can draw out where the constant part here has to equal the constant part on the right hand side, which is essentially 0. So that means that 4b1 plus 6bo has to be equal to 0. So we now have two equations and two unknowns, so we should be able to solve. So this one's easy, we're going to get b1 is 10 on 6, or we could write that a bit nicer as 5 on 3. And if we now bring that across over into this other equation, so I'm subbing in, so this is going to become 20 on 3, and I'll swing this, it's going to be negative 6bo. So bo, if I divide by the negative 6, it's going to become negative 20 on 18. Or again, we can write that a bit nicer as um, negative, sorry, 10 divided by 9. So we now know these two constants, which means we can sub it back into our xp equation. So bo came to negative 9 on 10, and b1 came to 5 on 3t. So we've now, now done that uh, second step in our process. All right. So the third step is to look for the overall solution, and that's where we add our hom homogeneous and particular solutions together, and then apply their conditions to find the constants. So, right in overall here. So adding together our two solutions, put x equals. So h was equal to all of this stuff. So let's pop it in. And this. And then the x of p we just worked out to be this part. Alright, so now we can look at our um, conditions and popping them in the equation. So they were given up in the text here. They're the same as what we had in the previous um, question. So at t equals 0, x is equal to 0.2. And at t is 1, x is equal to 0.1. So if we come down, let's start with the first one. So at t is equal to 0, x is equal to 0 0.2 in meters, and sub it into our equation. So a lot of stuff is going to drop away to 0 in here. Cool. So e to the power of 0 is 1, and cos of 0 is 1. So we can say that this is just going to be C1 on its own. Um, sine of 0 is 0, so that's going to knock that whole term out. And this got multiplied by 0 as well. So all that's left is the negative 10 on 9. So that means that uh, C1, if you add 0 0.2 and 10 on 9, it's approximately 1.311 with a decimal form. And then in order to get our other constant, C2, 
we're going to need to use our second condition. And that was at time is equal to one second, our displacement was 0.1 in meters. So again, if we put this information back up into our equation, and this time we know what C1 is, so I'm going to sub it in at the same time. We get that. And now the only unknown that appears in the equation is C2. So if you do 0 0.1 minus this, um, plus this, minus this, and then divide that answer by all of this stuff that's stuck on the C2, you end up with um, C2 falling out to be negative 1.461. So they were the two constants that we needed. So now we can write out our final equation for x equals just popping these two answers back up into the equation here. So let me write out that final answer then. T plus C2, so negative this. And we get that. All right, so that is the final answer for x. And if we sh probably should put units on, it's going to be in meters, um, since all of our um, conditions were given in meters. So I've written a code in order to just double check that um, the plot matches what I expect. So I've defined a time vector going from 0 to 2 seconds. I've got the constants that I worked out. And then this is the equation for x. And then I've just done a plot. So if I run it um, and get the plot up, it looks something like this. So what we can see is that at t is equal to 0, um, my plot is starting at about 0 0.2, hopefully. Yep, a little bit of rounding error here from my constants not being um, perfectly accurate. I only took a few decimal places. And then if you look at what's happening at t is equal to 1 second, which was our other condition, um, what we can see is that this is 0 0.1. Again, we've got a small amount of rounding error here. And that was the other condition that we had. So everything appears to match um, what we would expect. Um, so that's pretty much all there is in terms of the video.